Thank you. We'll take you to Congress now. Several House Democrats are pushing for universal background checks for ammunition purchases. It would essentially require people who buy ammunition from a licensed dealer or a private sale uh, to get the same FBI background check as you do to buy a gun. Senior Vice President of Gun Owners of America, Eric Pratt, joins us now. Eric, welcome. Thanks so much. Tell me about your top line thoughts to this proposed legislation. Well, uh, th this is a uh, classic anti-gun Democrat uh, agenda. You know, more restrictions is always the answer. And uh, you laid it out right. They, they want uh, background checks on ammunition. And the problem is we've already tried background checks on gun buyers. It doesn't work because, hey, bad guys still get guns. And these background checks cost innocent lives. Carol Bown of New Jersey was murdered while she was waiting for her background check for a gun purchase to be approved. You know, re remember the old saying, a, a right delayed is a right denied? Well, that's the absolute truth when it comes to our Second Amendment rights. Imposing hurdles before one can purchase guns and ammunition, it denies our rights protected under the Second Amendment. It costs lives, as it did with Carol Bown. And it'll lead to registration of gun owners. After all, why else would someone want ammunition unless they had the gun for it, right? So this is just another backdoor attempt at registration, which historically is the first step to gun confiscation. Don't forget the Democrats' lover boy, Beto O'Rourke, when he said, heck yeah, we're going to take your AR-15s and your AK-47. See, this is ultimately all about gun confiscation. Just wanted to clarify, though. Uh did, were you in favor of background checks for gun purchases? Never. Uh, that denies people's individual rights. If you have, you know, our Declaration of Independence says that everybody is uh, created equal and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. If you have a right to do something, whether it's to speak or get married or have children or protect yourself, you shouldn't have to ask permission from the government to do that. And when government does insert itself that way, then it starts setting up hurdles that prevents good people from protecting themselves, like Carol yeah. Bown and others who have been greatly abused as a result when they couldn't get a gun in time. I, I understand the, uh, of course, defense, right? The right to self-defense here. Uh, but again, would there be any sort of signs that would uh, sort of have you pause for a second as to whether or not a person should be a lawful gun owner? Well, think about it. When you actually look at the Department of Justice reports on the background check, more than 95 percent of the initial denials are false positives. It's actually stopping good people who have similar names, similar birthdays. And after all, aren't criminals still getting guns? It's not working. And it's denying us of our God-given rights. So this is something that uh, just needs to be chucked. And people would be a lot safer if governments stopped creating these gun-free zones, or now they call them sensitive places. Uh, we're fighting that in New York in a lawsuit. You know, the, the state has practically placed the entire state off limits. It almost would have been easier uh, if the legislature had simply said where people could carry. And that's the problem once you let government interject itself yeah. and start deciding who should or who shouldn't be able to exercise their rights. You get denials like Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, being denied just simply because of the, the color of his skin. Mm. Interesting perspective, um, although, of course, with background checks, you might uncover some things you wouldn't previously have known when it comes to records of uh, prior violent offenses. Eric Pratt, interesting. Again, uh, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate you talking with us. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You got it. Meanwhile, this